the ASEAN finance ministers jointly stated in a meeting held in Brunei Darussalam that they expect growth to hold up this year even as challenges of a generally weak global economy and capital inflows persist. While they are confident also that the regional economies will grow this year between 5.3 percent to 6 percent. Well, the region grew 5.6 percent last year, backed by strong macroeconomic fundamentals, robust domestic demand, and sound balance sheets of banks and the corporate sector. The forecast compares with the Philippines' own growth target for the year of 6 to 7 percent. The local economy grew in above target 6.6 percent last year. Despite the expected solid growth, the ASEAN finance minister also said that threats from a fragile global economy and resulting volatile capital inflows remain, which would warrant vigilance and cooperation among member states. They are also committed to adopt country-specific measures to address these challenges, noting that financial stability continues to be their utmost concern, with structural reforms to encourage private sector investment were also vowed. They are committed to implement appropriate monetary, fiscal and other macro prudential policies to sustain economic growth and maintain financial market stability. Well, sustain the ASEAN Infrastructure Fund will be deployed also this year, expected to be to finance large scale products, the projects to bridge the infrastructure gap in the region. Well, additional funds infused to Chiang Mai Initiative, a 240 billion US dollars pool of money countries may tap should they need in times of external shocks was also welcomed. And now let's hear some happy news in Malaysia, especially for SMEs, as the Malaysian government decision to defer the implementation of minimum wage for foreign workers has significantly helped SMEs sustain their operations. SMEs Association of Malaysia President Tae Ki Sin said many SMEs were afraid that they would go burst if, if forced to observe the ruling. According to K, SMEs now have time to adjust their operations so that they are able to pay the minimum wage when the time comes. And last month, the National Wages Consultative Council said that SMEs would not have to pay the minimum wage to foreign workers until December 31st. Minimum wage, which came into effect on January 1st for private sector employees, has been set at 900 ringgit in Peninsular Malaysia and 800 ringgit for Sabah, Sarawak and Labuan. It covers workers in all economic sectors except maids and gardeners. They say that Malaysian Chinese Association or MCA President Dr. Chua Soi Lek was among the first to voice out problems faced by SMEs by highlighting them to the government. Dr. Shaw had acted on their behalf and personally told the Prime Minister about the problems faced by SMEs. They say that Dr. Shaw had been going around meeting SMEs nationwide, listening to their views and compiling on the necessary data on a minimum wage policy before forwarding them to Prime Minister Najib Razak. The ruling party of Malaysia, the Barrison Nationals Manifesto, is being discussed by the public sector. See this in special report from the Star Malaysia. Having a house to call her own is business manager Munira Rohaizan's lifelong dream. However, she could not afford to buy a 400,000 ringgit apartment here, and neither could she buy a low-cost house as her salary did not fit into the specified limit. Um, what I noticed is it's kind of like um, the public housing right now. is um, It makes advantages for the people who are earning 5,000 and above and 3,000 and below. Unfortunately for the people who is like me, a middle class worker who is earning about three to five, there is no other benefit, there's no other kind of ins beneficial for us. There's no like bonus or something like that. So for the one that really hits the most is the middle class people. We can't afford to buy a house and yet we're not entitled to get a lower house because of our salary is 3,000 and above. So if there's anything that we can do about it, that would be great. Munira believed the One Malaysia People Housing Program, or PRIMA, which allowed home buyers to get an affordable place at below 20% of the market price, was well intentioned. Affordable and secure housing is one of the issues the Barisan National highlighted in its manifesto, in which it committed to build 1 million affordable homes, half of which will be PRIMA houses. Meanwhile, trainee engineer Abhinash Rahman believed although the houses will not be very near the city, 
the cost of living would be reduced. Um, it increases their travelling costs as well. Um, but then uh, if you recalculate by buying a house in KL instead of um, living in KL and getting more and more uh, burden on our shoulders, uh, I feel Kajang house is quite okay. Uh. And I don't mind. Uh, they give you count the cost and seek outlet, I think much cheaper. Senior citizen Aisha Ujang is at the age of 68. While most elderly are enjoying their golden years, yet she continues to work as a janitor to cope with the steep living costs. These are among the issues highlighted in BN's manifesto, where they have pledged to ease the cost of living, providing subsidised goods and services to reduce burdens of the public. Previous efforts that had been done regarding this issue include subsidies worth 134.8 billion ringgit since 2010 on items such as rice and flour, as well as ensuring the needy are placed first in enjoying these benefits. Other members of the public have also shared their thoughts, such as marketing executive Ng Zi En, who feels the cost of living is still bearable. Quite high, especially on food, but if it's street food, it's still alright, still affordable, but uh, uh, transportation is uh, okay there, yeah, not bad. Well, just like Thailand, Kunira Shah, yes, Vietnam right. is also planning to seize the analog broadcasting analog TV in the five biggest cities by 2020 as digital TV takes over. Well, under the transition project, in the first phase in particular, households in five big, biggest cities, such as in Hanoi, Ho Chi Minh City, Khen Thê, Haiphong, and Da Nang, uh, their households will have access to digital TV in a variety of forms by, of course, the 31st December 2015. But then the second phase, with the deadline by December 31st, 2016, the plan will be carried out in the other 26 provinces. And then in the 2018, the plan will be implemented in 18 provinces. And in the fourth one, digitalization will be implemented in remote provinces in the north and the central region. And uh, the state will help about 2 million poor families to buy set-top boxes to decode digital TV signals. But Director of Radio Frequency Agency, Mr. John Kwang Huan, said it would cost a huge sum to equip all citizens with boxes. We'll ask about the budget for the program to help the poor. According to Information and Communications Minister Nguyen Bak Son, well said it would come from the public interest telecommunication fund and from auction of television frequencies. Well, under the project, well, future Vietnamese TV companies will concentrate on developing content while other companies will take charge of broadcasting. So this means that television enterprises will have to rearrange their system now to prepare for the new model. And also according to the ministry, from June this year, the TV stations will have to report to the provincial leaders about implementing digitalization programs. And now it's time for World Within's for today. We're going to have a look at face tie, which is another way to treat the face, facial area without going through the um, under plastic surgery or anything. And you know, it's kind of like tighten up the mm -hmm. around the face and neck areas. <laughs> Let's have a look. <laughs> Welcome to World Within, a program that will update everything you need to know about health from top to toe and from the inside through the outside. When talking about sagging skin and wrinkles, those are things that we can't really run away from that because it comes with age and time. And for us as women, all we want to do is to stay younger, but some may consider to go through under the plastic surgery. But what if there's another innovation and technology that you don't need to go through all of this? It's called Festi. Would you like to try it? Festi is the latest technology to treat skin around face and neck areas. It is a RFAL technology using radio frequency to stimulate the fat tissue underneath the skin, aiming to firm and tighten up the treated area. And usually we use it for face and neck area, like for a sagging skin on the 
uh, jawline yes. or double chin or neck area, we can use this technology to treat. And it's the concept of this is a, it's a non-surgical facelift system. It's uh, facial contouring for um, to improve your facial profile. The treatment is a non-surgical method, but patients will receive their natural look and will get the same result as surgical method, which is effective and efficiency. Yes, we usually we use local anesthesia. We can uh, inject the uh, we can uh, use a uh, local anesthesia and um, the way we approach to the the area is we're gonna have to make a small puncture area on the side of your face, All like right. under your ear, okay. and we're gonna approach from that area and go to the tissue to the the area we want to treat, is that to like stimulate? If, to stimulate the collagen and to uh, treat the tissue and tighten up, mm -hmm. and like if you want to treat the cheek area at the jawline, we can go from this area. Uh, like right down. direct down to the the jawline yes. and treat it, mm -hmm. and like for double chin, we can use it to treat the fat, melt the fat, remove it, and tighten up. But would patients have saggy skin after that? Because I believe that after taking out the fat, it's um, you know sometimes, um, for example, like liposuction, people will have like skin sagging skin, skin like, right? Yes, it's, skin. Um, with with face ties, you will not have this this. Uh, uh, problem at yeah. all because it's gonna tighten up your skin at the same time. It's this this way you will not get from uh, surgery or from any other treatments. Actually, it works on different area. Um, we have to assess the, to to do an examination to see what's the problem exactly. If it's the problem is from the muscles, we're gonna use Botox. But if it's not, like it's more from fat in the tissue, then we 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 gonna consider to use face tight. After receiving the treatment, the treated area will be swollen for two days, and it will be back to normal after one week. The treatment process will take about one to two hours. The result will last 3 to 5 years and in some cases, patients do not need to come back and get it redone if they have a healthy lifestyle. If you are on any medication and vitamins, please inform the doctor first as you may have to stop taking medication a few weeks before receiving the treatment. For young people who wish to have a V-shaped face, you can also do this as well. And on next week's episode, we're going to have a look at body tight, another way to firm up your body without going through plastic surgery and liposuction. Stay tuned. That's it today for the edition of Good Morning ASEAN. We'll see you again, same time, same place, same channel. From 7 to 7.30 to 8 a.m. 8 a.m., <laughs> yes, that's right. Uh, Monday to Friday, and that's been your time. And I'm Patsurang Desha, Purangsi. Sadika. Sadika.